Oh, hey, y'all. I am on tour. Go to WhitneyCummings.com for tickets. I'm coming to Atlantic City. I'm coming to Chicago. I'm coming to Florida, specifically Orlando. You name it. I'm coming there. Salt Lake City. WhitneyCummings.com. Is this my water? Is that your water? I did start drinking your water. But look at this. Here we go. There's another one. Can you help open? Can I help open your water? I don't have the... For you? In Estonia, is it just women? No. Yeah. women's work? Yeah, exactly. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just gave you a water that I hadn't already opened. Is that like the most like sacrilegious thing a woman can do in Estonia? Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. You could have opened that yourself. No, I don't have nails. Okay. I chew them. It's my only vice. Your only vice. It's my only vice. Is chewing your nails. Is chewing. How, can and I, can murdering we... gay men on Rainy Street. <laughs> Those two things. Bap, bap, bap. The gay population in Austin is decreasing rapidly. Do you think it's because of the rainy... I've noticed in the in the good cafes, the baristas are now all <laughs> straight men. <laughs> Don't know how to make a <laughs> Americano. <laughs> straight men made to work. They're always like Nesca. Have you ever noticed what straight men drink as coffee? Disgusting. <laughs> ne Nesca for three in one has the same effect. I feel like guys just drink milkshakes. They go to a diner, have the, you know, the one that's boiling for 18 hours. The or fucking have it, the, yeah just the acid. It's disgusting yeah, yeah yeah just formaldehyde it's disgusting uh or it'll just be like a blizzard a yeah. dairy queen do you have dairy queen in estonia no we don't never been to one but i know the logo disqualified <laughs> dq right that's what i thought i literally thought it's a sports store until i got high in vancouver after a gig and i went into dq thinking i'm gonna get all this awesome shit. Wait, and it wait. was like midget milkshakes or something. But you thought there was a sports store yeah, called... Yeah, because it's disqualified. DQ is obviously disqualified. How the fuck was I supposed to know? But why would anyone name a sports store after... Disqualified. Like foul? That'd be like naming one like, like yeah, technical it's like foul? like so hardcore. We have so sure, hardcore... Sure, sure. Sh like yellow card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah, yellow card. Yeah. yeah, but it's like the least... Two people who know nothing about, about sports. sports. <laughs> Should we start a sports podcast? I know nothing about sports. Dude, that's another thing. Um, these American comedians... Hey... I didn't see the game. <laughs> like every conversation I've ever had in my life has been, did you see the game? I've never seen the game. <laughs> it was. I've never seen a game. And then, oh, oh. Whitney, how, do you know what men do now? How was your flight? Fantasy football. Oh, I know. Dude, we're not even playing. We're just fantasizing how. By the will... way, here's the thing. Watching football is fantasy football already. Yeah, exactly. You're already fantasizing exactly. that you're involved with exactly. this team's success in any capacity. Yeah. Fantasy football feels redundant. Exactly. Watching it, you're already in a fantasy world. Yeah. Acting like when you yell at the TV, they can hear you, that they want to know how you feel about it. like. Uh, and also, just pick one sport and one team and be that guy. Like, I watch UFC. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, Stephen, has time to enter my... But American men watch baseball, mm -hmm. hockey, football, basketball. What are we doing? <laughs> Answer the emails, you f That's why your career <laughs> is going nowhere. Because you're missing these emails <laughs> watching the game. But so why in Estonia is football not soccer? soccer. They watch uh, Europeans do watch soccer. I okay. have friends who watch soccer. It's just it's running. You're watching men run around. Yeah. I don't know either. What yeah. if that's what gets me canceled? It is wild. It will. You can literally the say the end we're now going blackface, but saying that soccer is boring. Men will kill you when yeah, you yeah, say that. something about soccer. <laughs> you can say that. You can say anything else. Um, okay, so you're in California for the first time. Mm -hmm. What's hit you? If you go to a cafe, right? Like a Starbucks? Like no, 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 no. I don't go into chains. I'm like so cool. Okay. So, so if... <laughs> 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 by the way, but by the way, there's whatever you went into today was a chain. Probably. <laughs> oh, uh, when I moved to Canada, I didn't know that um, Chile. Chili's. So I went into Chile. Chili's. Chile. Chili's. Chili's. And I'm like, oh, why? Why was that hard? It's like a cool family restaurant. What? And I thought, you know, it's that the because it was like an older guy, younger. So I imagine it's like a. I didn't know it's a chain until... Chili's. Yeah. But I thought this is my spot on the corner. Yeah. Everybody shat on my chilies. And I like, was like, this <laughs> a nice family business. I really thought about bringing comics over there. Thinking you, it's cool. 
You went to Chili's yeah. and you, when did you realize that it was a chain? Yeah, when I went like downtown after six months, uh -huh. and I noticed another Chili's. <laughs> and I was like, these sons of bitches. <laughs> Happened with Subway too when I was a kid. We got our first subway in Estonia. I went there thinking it's so cool. What a concept. Can I ask a dead serious question? Mm -hmm. Are subway sandwiches so good? They're they're horrible. So how has Subway managed to be the number one chain restaurant still to this day after a file was their mascot? Mm -hmm. Not a dent in their business. Not a slowdown. They can't be doing well. Subway can't be. I'm, Do you remember Jared from yes, Subway? Yes, 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 yes. Was that in Estonia? Yeah, yeah, we got remember? the news. He was also like six, seven. Mm -hmm. He was like six feet tall. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just pitch this idea, okay? I feel like if you're a very big pedophile, like tall, mm -hmm. it should be twice as bad because everyone is small to you. Exactly. Very good. If you're six, seven and you still mm -hmm. need a kid mm -hmm. how small do you need it sir so if like a tyler fisher f kids then you'd be like well if peter you know. dinklage f kids respect honestly yeah <laughs> who else is he gonna f you were at the playground anyway yeah do you have siblings no i have a sister i have a sister okay. <laughs> wait hold on no, I have a sister. I forgot is what sibling just... was. I, thought, I think sibling was. Ask me about my parents. I was. At... <laughs> Ask me about my parents. Do you, uh, what about your parents? All dead. Oh, are they? I love they? saying that. I love are saying they? I love saying Mine that. too. Yeah, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. Same. Well, yeah, cool. Actually, found out the real dad is alive. Isn't interested. In meeting you. Yeah. Have you asked him since you've gotten famous? Oh, yeah. Still. The tickets are moving. I'm <laughs> What's the issue? What's the issue, Dad? I saw the car on your Facebook. It's We're... a Ford Taurus 2008. <laughs> Show up. So he's in Estonia? No, he's in Finland. Oh, so how I found out? Well, I always had a suspicion that something's off in my family. I had a stepdad at one point, but most of, the, most of my childhood, it was my sister and my mom, which is great. I'm a very, that's why I'm a very feminine guy too. Like mm. all my friends would watch, like I, these guys all watch action, you know, like Marvel, the Spider-Man. You know, I would watch Grey's Anatomy, Sex and the City, Felicity, Ali McBeal. That was my shit. Yeah. Yeah, I love that shit. But you're drama. so good with women, I bet. Not good, but I definitely, all my friends throughout high school, throughout my life, even in the comedy community, mm. I always hang out with female comics. I, it's just my vibe more. Mm -hmm. We talk about drama. I love gossip. I, I don't mean, like, I want to know chicks so I can bang them. You know, it's just odd to me that stand up is thought of such a male thing because it's such a feminine. Yeah, like, for sure. Skill. Yeah. I, I used to try a bit too about how everybody's like, oh, you didn't have a dad. How sad. And I'm like, well, every story I've heard about the guy seems horrendous. Yeah. Always some intense Neanderthal at home. You know, <laughs> I just it was just me and my me, my mom drinking rosé, watching Grey's Anatomy. Did what you a childhood. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Did you ever ask your mom where he went? So, no, we don't. See, this is another thing we don't do. Americans love to be like, ah, I confronted my mom. We don't talk about stuff. <laughs> you know, I asked, where is, where is he? We don't. No. We don't say a lot. We don't know weird hugs. Yeah. You know, he's no. been upstairs last six years. Exactly. I didn't even know because I, I didn't, didn't ask. Know. I didn't. I literally, when people go, oh, you didn't ask about your father? I go, nah. I always knew something's up. Because my personality was a bit different than my sister's, you know. And we were just she older, bit, younger? Uh, yeah, older. She's one of these that, like, knows everything. Like, likes numbers. She's got her sh** together. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm insane. I've never been on time. I've never been known time. Like, if you tell me, let's meet at 4, you might as well say 7.30. I mean, <laughs> let's just throw a number I out there. <laughs> I literally move by the sun. <laughs> But is this always been the case? Always. I'm always late, like always the insane. Time is just like a gentle suggestion. And then, you know, when people say, and then, you know, when people say, well, uh, huh, is uh, my time less important than, uh, than yours, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always is. <laughs> my life, it's my time. It's. I'm sure yours is valuable too, but it's absolutely valuable. To you. But I don't, it's I don't, you. Yeah. I don't give a f <laughs> about your sh and you complaining I about this I have a vibe going right now is taking and I will time. be late <laughs> the song is playing and I'm getting a little bit of sun on my balcony this meeting is postponed 
is, the vibe is good. I'm a vibe guy. You're a vibe guy. I'm a vibe guy. And what does that mean exactly? Sometimes I'll have something up in like five minutes that I'm supposed to meet somebody and mm -hmm. the vibe's off. And I'll make up like, you know, grandma just got hit by a car. You know, I'll be like, I gotta go. I appreciate this because this you're kind of saying that you trust your gut. And if something- 100%. Feel Every time I don't, it's horrendous. Mm -hmm. Every date I've gone on where I'm like, I don't really, but I'll go. We're six hours of my life. Ooh, six hours? First, oh yeah, I give a proper date to everybody. I don't know how to exit the date. Six hours? I went on this one date. It was so expensive. And so, yeah, in New York, right? We, were, we go on a date. You know how I got out of the date? No. So first of all, we go to a restaurant. She's like, I'm not even hungry. Orders the steak. Oh. Did she not finish it? No. Literally, one bite and keeps talking. But that should be the end of the date. Dinner. First date. Dinner. I know, but then she's like, let's go on. And I'm like so autistic. So I'll be like, yeah, sure. Let's go. We go to a jazz club. She orders a bottle of wine. A they, jazz club? What, a jazz club. What is your dating age range? New York, <laughs> you went to a jazz club? Yeah, her name was Gladys. Like, a, uh, <laughs> what? She was 76 years old. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're at this jazz club. She orders like a bottle of wine, takes one sip, and then we have to leave because they closed the jazz club. Great. Another $200. Up down the drain. <laughs> You know when I got out of the date? When no. she was, we went to a karaoke bar and she, as she was singing her song, I went to the bathroom and I realized I'm never getting out of this date unless I just bounce. And as she's, she's on stage, she sees me walking. What was she and singing? Whitney Houston. The, I Will Always Love You? Yeah, yeah. Because she's just like... No, she's, she's she wasn't. Face. Yeah, yeah. She's a hacky, shit-faced blonde girl. She's hacky? a hacky? Hack. <laughs> She was a hack. But you can't be a hack if you're not a comic. Not a hack civilian. There's, I, there's plenty dude, of hacks civilians. Hold on. Okay, NPC. You hold, know, on, hold, you on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A hack like, civilian? A hack civilian. This just changed my life. You can guess every one of her answers before you ask it. That is so wild. Yeah, just, we call that like basic, but hack is so much better. It's hack. All you're of just her a thought hack. patterns are generated by her environment. No second guessing, no questioning. Where did you find this stuck. person? Where are you finding these? Big tits. That's all I knew. <laughs> she had big tits and she smiled at me. I'm going on a date. And then you asked her for her, like her number? No, she very forcefully got my number. You can f me if I don't want to f you. Because I'll, I'll just do it out of... Just Pity? Be a good man. I'll be okay. a good man. Okay. I'll be a good man. Do you come on time? No. <laughs> But that's when you start dating women in their 30s. The date doesn't matter as much as the breakfast and the overall vibe. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So yeah. what's the longest relationship you've been in? Like two years. Two that's years. a long time. Well, eh, it's okay. Why did it end? Uh, I needed to do stand-up comedy. We were in Melbourne. And it was like a goodbye on the, in the airport with the tears. Oh, gosh. But yeah. you could keep seeing each other. There's FaceTime. Yes, but I wanted to end it. So I had I was going to say, I love your acting. So like I you're had... like a sailor exactly. going to war in the 50s. <laughs> I the like, open mics in you, Melbourne. By the way, you could totally FaceTime and have a long... I building a hole. <laughs> like you went on a ship. Exactly. And I you... need to look like a hero and not like a piece of shit. Yeah, like it's not exactly. it's not that hard to if stay If I would have been honest, I would have been a piece of shit. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. I look like I'm literally saving the country. Right, 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 right. So when did you know it was over? Immediately, but then it takes another year and a half. <laughs> you know how guys are. Immediately. By the way, literally, you know what? As I soon thought, as I came, bah, I, two years. I thought, I thought it takes me two years. To get out. To get out, yeah. Of a relationship. Because I need to build a narrative where you leave me and you feel great about it. So what are we going to do about that? It's very bad. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't fixed it. Um, it was uh, 10 years ago. I'm I, still struggling with it. I Because I thought that was more of a girl thing or that was like my I'm very, thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I knew we weren't a match. And two exactly. years later, I was out of there, you exactly. know? But it's like, why can't you just dismount? Yeah, I know. Are you bad with confrontation? It's just like... Um, you think that you're going to hurt them? It's, it's one of those things like I remember uh, I knew a waitress when I was a bartender and she said this thing to a guy. She goes, uh, some guy kept going to the spot and asking her out. And the guy looks like a pile of shit. Okay. Uh, and she was a beautiful angel. But guys, you know how guys are. They look, at, they look like f***ing Shrek. Mm -hmm. And they go up to the most beautiful girl. A lot of times, the, mo a lot of times the most beautiful girl, no one's hitting on her because they don't think they have a chance. So sometimes, yeah, like, but you don't, you're not gonna bang the guy with the Crocs and who looks like a fucking. Look, let me know his credit of, score. Yeah, well, fair. Mm. And uh, she said to him something like, like I remember just overhearing. She goes like, "The fact you're even asking me is a dick move because now I have to say no." You know? Ah, uh, you're making me be a bitch. Exactly. And I remember hearing that and being like, "Yeah, that's how I always feel like." You know when somebody hangs who's this girl that did this? So a, new, a girl I knew, a waitress. Uh, where? 
uh, at a bar I used to work at. Okay, so whoever this woman is, I would like to say, please stop doing that. You're an embarrassment to women. <laughs> can women please stop behaving like this? You could, <laughs> you could just go, oh, I have a boyfriend. Thanks for asking. You could have just done that instead of being... No, this guy a, needed a shutdown. I don't think so. I think that we're... What is this thing where women now need to like... <laughs> that is true, by the way. What are you doing? That Why is... can't you just be gracious? The guy is... Uh, you get to be you, and he has to be him. And he had this delusional dream, like you and I have, where we want to be comedians for a living. He had one dream. He just wanted to ask this girl out. She could have just said no and moved on with her day. Fair. He was just asking her out, right? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, he kept coming all the time to the place. It was clear that he's he was like 45. She was maybe 22 and an angel. All right. He should have read the vibe a long yeah, time Yeah, there is like a you need to read the room. <laughs> yeah, because you that's what you just say. You can't green lit, guys. But if you're we a... will rape as soon as you give us the green light. But rape means you didn't get a green light. I don't do maths. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do geometry. I wait until the vibe is a no. Um, well, that's also like if you're a waitress, it's a little confusing because you want guys to give you tips and you yeah. want them to keep coming back. 100%. And, you know? Exactly. It's yeah. a power position too, you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like the per when you're someone's waitress, when they ask you out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. be like, I'm not allowed. I'm at work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then ask I'm literally else. so autistic that I'm like the worst closer you've ever met. In. That's my biggest problem. Is. So often I'll like flirt with a girl. At least I'm thinking I'm flirting. Mm -hmm. And then later they're like, why didn't you f*** me? And I'm like, I didn't even know that was on the table. You need to jump first in my face. And even then I'll be like, you want to watch a movie? Yeah, but the kind of girl that would do that is probably not the kind of girl you want. See, this is now we get to the crux mm -hmm. of the whole problem mm -hmm. in my life. That's it. The girls that I like never like me. Uh... Like in the hot... Crazy women with big tits. Uh huh. They come after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're a challenge and you're aloof. I think the women that are used to not being rejected usually tend to gravitate towards people that they have to chase because it's such yeah. a, it's so, it's usually so easy for them to get somebody. So yeah. you're this like, you know. And, and then, oh, when I ran out of that karaoke bar, you know, mm -hmm. I ran down Manhattan Street giggling and skipping <laughs> and like this, <laughs> like I felt like a curse was lifted. It was one of the most powerful feelings I've ever had. I spent like <laughs> 500 bucks on the date. And, then the, and as she's seeing she's seeing me leave too. And then she's seeing me. What do you make of American women so far? I love them, but I don't think they're really into me that much. You don't think? Yeah, I don't think so, no. You're getting more successful. Your time yeah, will that's come. what they're, exactly. <laughs> the economy's really bad and we don't I have health care. You're going to have to get Tony Hinchcliffe money. And once you do, you will be just swimming in it. That is crazy that, yeah. If you <laughs> right have, now, women, women can't that, really, we can't date broke guys right now. That's an angle for a bit about it. Women that don't have health care. Uh, you got to hit them with a different angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you totally do. Mm -hmm. You definitely can't give them chlamydia. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they cannot afford to get it fixed. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's a, it's, it'll, you'll do great, you know, yeah. starting now. What do you make of what's going on in America right now? Sometimes America just surprises me. I remember when I saw like Andrew Tate videos, I was like, oh, clearly a troll for children. It's for children. Like teenage boys that need mm, like a like, hero. Like the thoughts that Andrew Tate is having, I had when I was like nine years old. Oh, I was okay. like, ooh, cool car, my fast. You know, <laughs> that's what I thought grown up. Sure. Thing. Yeah. Chest tattoo. We, yeah. Kickbox. Yeah. With a snake tattoo on my neck. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought when I was like 11. I was like, I'll get a snake tattoo on my neck and jump with my motorcycle and then say, yeah, girl, get up, make me a sandwich. That's what I thought. Like when I'm 11, I'm cool, you know? Well, I have so many questions for you and I don't really know where to start, but I'm more fascinated by like the way that you think. I can't stop talking about Diddy. As you get famous, like are, you're getting famous kind of fast, you know, whatever. Yeah, I was I... on open micro three months ago and now I have to do the greatest hits at, my, at the end of my set. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> It's so insane. It's so insane. What are you going to do to not let power corrupt your brain? Do we think that the thing that happens with it has Diddy already done is, it. That, is that like this Diddy thing? Was he already like this or did fame make him like this? Because I'm starting to wonder if we have to put really talented people like in a museum. Like if you're super talented and make the kind of bops that Diddy made, we just have to be like, uh oh, you have to be in a zoo. Isn't it crazy that then, uh, if you want to make it in the entertainment business, all you got to do is not and you'll just out outwork the rapist. Outpace everyone. Yeah, you'll just outpace. If you don't f kids and don't f and just do any, just start singing, you'll be a stadium act at 60. <laughs> and just start singing. If there's like comedy workshops, that's all I would say. Yeah. Like just, hey guys, 
All you gotta do is not re You know what I'm trying to... And it turns out it's literally <laughs> it possible. Literally turn it turns out not to is literally the hardest thing in show business. I feel like Diddy always had these eccentric little things. And I think sometimes we look at like, like, oh, how fun. Like he has like a party where everybody wears white. Like, is that fun? Like he's so eccentric. And you're like, no, that is like controlling That's and weird control, yeah, yeah. to give people homework for a party. And it's make like Bill Cosby made everybody watch him eat, you know, before they could start eating. What? Like before his shows, that was the... They had to watch him eat. He would just, and he would eat really slowly and tell like a long story, you know. And you just have to stand there. <laughs> oh, God. And people would be like, oh, but it's so, he, that's his, you know. Ah. It, it, it's eccentric. It's weird. It's, yeah. We should be so lucky to be witnessing Yeah, this. yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Remember the first apology video that Diddy did on his uh, Zoom call and there were waves crashing in the background? It's one of my favorite apology videos of all times. When you hear like ocean waves, he's clearly having the best time of it in his life. And he has to that's be That's like the one after the Cassie video? Yeah. What? And he's just like in a, like an over the water villa in yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Bali or something. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. And just you like, you guys. <laughs> and then there was one where like, it was like, was it? I think it was Harvey Winston also. He had like a conference call and you can clearly hear him, uh, hear him on a boat with women who don't speak English, you know? And I remember thinking like, I remember th that's when everybody says like, oh, Harvey's life is ruined. And I was like, y you do know that now he's just on a boat boat in near Singapore with <laughs> bitches who don't have passport. That's all he adapted. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So his post <laughs> life is still better than my pre <laughs> life will ever be. He had a lot of them too. He had like, I remember the thing with Harvey Weinstein. It's something like he drives around in a van mm -hmm. to take meetings because that's how he's so productive. And there's like a couch in the van. He takes meetings. He sleeps in the van and there's a bed in the van. It's like he's and you're like, can we time out? Can we time out for a second? Bed in the van. Huh? Bed in like, the van. Like you're, listen to what you're saying. But we yeah. go like, no, no, no. This is how we get so much done. And they're like high performers. Like all this stuff. I'm like, mm, I don't know, dude. I don't like it one bit. Yeah. I don't like it one bit. You guys, you know about me and energy. It's a constant battle. I have too much. I have not enough. There's no in between. <laughs> Have you ever watched those energy drink commercials, though, where these people are doing extreme sports and you're like, I'm not looking for a drink that gives me the energy to like jump off a cliff or wrestle a bear. I just want to get through my day. OK, that, that, that is why I choose Aspire Energy Drink. Aspire Energy is the healthy energy drink with half the caffeine of traditional energy drinks sourced from premium green tea. It's all about refreshingly unextreme energy because sometimes half the energy is really all you need. Okay, everyone's running around talking a million miles an hour. I already do that. Okay, I don't need some crazy energy drink that's going to make me turn into a boxer or, or go do a slap fight in Vegas. You know who I'm talking to directly. Whether you're running errands, headed to the gym for a light workout, or just trying to stay awake through a meeting, Aspire gives you that perfect boost without the jitters or crash. Aspire Energy has a light, crisp taste with a sparkling finish and comes in delicious flavors. My favorite is strawberry watermelon. There's mango lemonade and mixed berry. The best part is it has zero sugar, zero calories, and won't keep you up at night overthinking all the embarrassing things that you have ever done. Aspire is perfect for life's unextreme activities, whether you're grocery shopping, just doing your taxes, folding laundry after it's been sitting there for three days, whatever. It's the perfect drink for anyone who just simply wants to get through their day. I can't have an energy drink that has me like going through the roof. I have a new child. I need to be able to fall asleep at any moment. I need a drink that gives me energy, but I also have to be able to be narcoleptic, quite frankly. Love Aspire. Use code 15Whitney, 15Whitney for 15% 15 off your first purchase on Amazon or go to AspireDrinks.com to find Aspire Energy at a store near you. That's code 15Whitney for 15% 15 off your first order. <coughs> Sometimes it makes you burp. Now, I don't need to tell you about how insanely busy things get when you have a kid. I mean, I want to say like it gets busy at mealtime, but like it's always mealtime. OK, just because there's food all over the floor doesn't mean, you know, it's from breakfast and then it's dinner. And you're like, is this from earlier? Like, why is there clam chowder in my armpit? I don't it's just it's always dinner time. It's always lunchtime. It's always breakfast time. I can't figure it out. My baby is just always hungry. He wants food five minutes ago yesterday. I, I don't know if I need a meal plan or a time machine. I don't know. OK, but by the time I've actually cooked something, he doesn't even want to touch it at this point. I don't it's honestly I think he's playing a mind game with me and he's winning. 
a friend of mine actually suggested to me Nurture Life. Nurture Life, it's a meal delivery service focused on helping busy parents easily feed their babies and children from 10 months to 10 years old. They provide fresh meals and snacks that are delicious, nutritious, and fully cooked so that they're ready to serve in just one minute with Nurture Life. My kid can enjoy a healthy, nutritionally balanced diet while still eating all their favorites. You know, he loves mac and cheese, spaghetti and meatballs, all the other uh, amazing meals that Nurture Life provides. Because guess what? That thing on the bottom of the car that might be a milk dud, might be a pill, that's not how you feed your kid. Okay. Nurture Life's meals are made fresh every week, never frozen, and shipped directly to your door. My baby is obsessed and even, I mean, adults can eat it. I don't, it's not like only for babies. You know, my baby does kind of like give me side eye, like, why are you eating my food, mom? Because I'm the alpha baby I made you. That's why Nurture Life is the top meal delivery service, not because of the threat that I just made to my baby, hypothetically. School is starting back, so it's good to have some help in the kitchen. Nurture Life is going to save you a lot of stress. and The meals arrive quickly. They're always delicious, super easy to serve. Henry's favorite is um, there's a chicken mac and cheese. So how does Nurture Life work? It's very simple. You're going to select from over 50 varieties of nutritious balanced meals on their weekly menu from finger foods for babies to toddlers to full meals for older kids. And then Nurture Life is going to do the cooking for you. The meals are fresh. They're delivered straight to your door in refrigerated packaging. I love Nurture Life so much because it just takes all the stress and anxiety out of feeding Henry the love of my life. I don't have to scramble to make him a scramble to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to worry if he's going to like what I cook or not. I don't have to worry if it's not going to be healthy. They handle all of it. Nurture Life's mission is to raise the standard for children's food in America, one meal and snack at a time. It's about time that flexible meal subscriptions existed for babies and kids. So head to nurturelife.com. Use code good for you for 55% off your first order. 55% off. Once again, nurturelife, N-U-R-T-U-R-E-L-I-F-E.com. Promo code good for you for 55% off your first order. I just think the worst part about doing comedy, being isolated, is we, we, when you self-reflect a lot. Like my biggest enemy mm. is my brain. Yeah, I have a, uh, I have one of a lot of those like shut up brain days. You know where you just have a thought pattern and you can't get out of it, mm -hmm. and then two hours goes by yeah. and you've done nothing, mm -hmm. and then you're like, what? Like who even? Why mm. am I even thinking of this? That's why being in a relationship is always good. Do you just? Say it out and there's somebody else next to you who hopefully won't be as crazy as you and be like, yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to like balance. That's why I like friends around. I always like when people are around me. I like having friends over. I love mm -hmm. cooking for people. I'm a big, just I love when people cook for me. What do you I cook? Like, well, I have only two dishes. I, I'll make you a killer breakfast and pasta to make you sleepy. Okay. Yeah. Why do you have to like your roofy linguine? Why yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very old school roof here. Yeah. Why do you? I'm like a nine. I'm like an 1860s. A... <laughs> I'm like an 1860s Bill Cosby. Why do you? Have... <laughs> old fashioned. I'll do... Italian Bill Cosby is yeah, just yeah. pasta with just tur a delicious turkey. Delicious meal. <laughs> the tryptophan. <laughs> yeah. From the turkey. Yeah, I don't. I first of all will never have sex with a man after eating pasta. It is like my number one. <laughs> like no, no. Yeah, I'll, I'll fill you up and make you feel disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's my game plan. <laughs> Um, you've been touring a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm hearing a lot of like, this city in America, it's like San Francisco is Gaza. Cal you know, you get, and then you get there and you're like, it's not that bad. Of course you it's know, not. You know what I mean? But that's everywhere in the world, you know? Like my friend oh. went to Iran like a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Okay. You know how in the Sketchy. American news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you think. As someone is does. Exactly. And then my you go to- My friend just went to Iran. And then you go to Iran and you just eat pierogies and you just- walk around and you it's a beautiful Iran's city. amazing. You're, amazing. Amazing. Literally amazing. Yeah. That's how it always is. You might think like, I remember going to Poland a couple of years ago, same thing. In What's your, up with Poland? Yeah, in your head, you're like football hooligans and the city's burning. It's, it's amazing. You have an amazing uh, espresso and you talk to a pretty girl and then you go to your hotel and check off. It's okay. an amazing city. <laughs> it's an amazing city. It's an amazing city. <laughs> I highly recommend. Are you jacking <laughs> off to the conversation with the girl? 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Why not hang out with her more and not jack off? Too scared. The jack off is right there. <laughs> I get immediate resolution within 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah. I'll have to imagine that we're going to move in together and get to know you, and it's going to be a whole process. And then we're going to have to run out on karaoke again. And we're going to spend 500 bucks. Or I can just talk to you, smell you, keep the smell in my, in my, in my nose for a bit, run to the hotel, jack off with the blinds open.
<laughs> hoping somebody will see me and get me on tape and give me some excitement in my life. In Poland, I think it was Putin killed the prime minister, uh, shot down his plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just subbed in his twin brother for a couple you know of years. How it is. You know how we be. <laughs> and by the way, everyone knew about it. Like all the, everyone and they knows. were like, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, we can't let Putin think he killed our, like, no, no, no. Yeah. We'll get, put a little filler, get, figure out how to make him look exactly. That's it. Problem solved. That's what we do, baby. That is so fucking <laughs> thug. Especially right now, culturally, no better time for comedy because a lot of, for in order to, to, there to be released, there needs to be a lot of tension. That's that, why it's thriving right now. That's it. That's why it's thriving right now. But that's also how Estonia, uh, like where I'm from, turned out to be a great comedy scene. Same thing. Former communist country, mm. all this liberation of yeah. culture, yeah. all this f you to the system mm. creates like an uh, just like an underground movement of young people being angry when you watch TV and you get nothing, no entertainment for yourself. Now stand up comes along. Yeah. So there's huge release. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. That's why if you go to like, dude, I went to Spain. I yeah. lived in Spain for a bit during COVID. Where you know? in Spain? In Bar Bar Who? Yeah. Barcelona? In in Spain, you know, like... Uh, Why did they, you pick Spain? They have the food. Okay. The weather, the cycling, the beaches, mm -hmm. the beaches. The beaches and... The tapas. Okay. The food, the coffee, the prices. Got it. Cheaper. Is it? It's very cheap. Mm -hmm. One dollar espresso. Boom. Two dollar beer. What do you think about that? A plus. They have some... Uh, they have like comedy clubs there. And... Uh, but they're mostly performing for expats. But in Spanish culture, like when you talk to Spanish people and you would do stand up for them, uh, the, the ones that speak English, you know, they just look at your act and they're always like, why so angry? And you're like, it's the f***ing, you know, the tension that's in the air that needs to get released. Why you know? aren't you angry? Exactly. And people are like, what are you so riled up about? I'm like, have you not seen? Yeah. Like, w even if the news is. 10% real. <laughs> Let's yeah. assume 90% of it is fake at this point. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Like, dude, Facebook put two robots in a room together. And within five minutes, they had their own language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's bad. Time to freak out. That's bad. It's time to freak out. That's bad. I think the, the dorks, they're going to bring back the woolly mammoths. They, they took woolly mammoth DNA. They're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. I'm sure Joe Rogan will kill it before it really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the woolly mammoth comes out. <laughs> They're introducing at the Brooklyn Zoo the new Willie Mammoth. Rogan's just <laughs> real naked choking it already. Can you fuck me? Rogan's just riding it. <laughs> There's nothing more powerful than riding a woolly mammoth. <laughs> just doing spots. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, is that Joe Rogan on a woolly mammoth? I mean, it's just, and you live in Texas. Like, were you there when the grid went down? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like. What I? I don't even remember. We're having earthquakes kind of on a daily basis in California. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. it's time to be a little anxious. Uh -huh. That's why America's the best at stand-up comedy, because all this f***ing tension, racial segregation, whatever shit you went through, mm -hmm. it's 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 created an amazing base of culture. Do you think course. that you have a little bit of anger that your dad left? or I don't know. Doesn't want to No, I don't think out? so. No, I don't think so. Do you know anything about your ancestral trauma? Well... I mean, obviously, there's that point of like, uh, you know, like uh, sometimes you meet like an American and they'll be like, oh, my great grandfather came over here on a boat, you know, and that's why my trauma comes from. <laughs> and if we play that game, yeah. my mom hid from the Russian army. So if trauma was the, you know, the, you know what a Brita filter is? I do. Like if I would piss in a Brita filter. The first pour is the one that I got, you know. Sure. Yours is maybe four pours through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still a piss. Your mom. But I'd rather hit. drink that <laughs> than the glass I got. So your mom hid from the Russian army? Yeah, because it's so recent, all that uh, the She's occupation. She's Ukrainian? Oh. No, the occupation. It's 1991 that we got so liberated. So crazy. Yeah, so it's very recent. But that's why, of, co of course, Americans have a different uh, background too. And... Uh, if we if we play that generational trauma when people like to go like, yeah, my great great grandfather came over here on a boat. Well, there's currently a generation that's also moving here from Mexico, creating more trauma for their kids. So that's still if we're playing that game. We are. Yeah. We're playing. Yeah. And you're so, winning. I'm winning, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> look, my mom couldn't find the Princess Diana beanie baby, and it was very upsetting. What's that? Did you guys ever have beanie babies? 
No, we had communism. <laughs> we were struggling to find bread. <laughs> Didn't have time to think about the Beanie Baby. <laughs> hey, have you seen the Beanie Baby? <laughs> Sorry, too busy looking for our real baby. You guys couldn't who find the <laughs> army took for food. So maybe I haven't seen the Beanie Baby. <laughs> Once you see my real baby, can you let me know? And then I'll get back to you on the Beanie Baby situation. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were looking for bread. Mm -hmm. We were pushing the free bread away because we don't eat carbs. <laughs> yeah. As you were guy as you guys were enjoying the Beatles at Woodstock, <laughs> we were eating the Beatles. I took a friend of mine who's Russian to the Austin Toy Museum. Oh. Which is amazing. Mm. And he didn't know any of the toys. Of course not. I was like, Teddy Ruxpin. He was like, Yeah, yeah we, didn't we had have the that. wooden horse. Yeah. We had the wooden horse with a missing leg. Nothing. Exactly. N literally nothing. I was like, Care Bears, oh my God. He's like, yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, Care Bears, the one that shoot the love. Yeah. Oh, good. Our bears literally <laughs> ate us. There was no care in the, our bears. What is it with Russians and bears? Oh, there's a lot of bears. <laughs> I know, but there's a lot of bears here too. We don't like have weddings with them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wrestle them. The way you behave with a bear tells me everything I need to know about your psyche. Uh -huh. If you see a bear and you don't think like, I'm going to lose... Mm -hmm. Or if you think it's like your friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have a pro we have a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been online too much. You're you've been online too you've been much. On too you're much. Bro you you're disconnected from your gut because your gut would go like be scared. A hundred percent. You're a zombie, and it's just Darwinism at this point. A lot of the stuff we're seeing right now, I'm like, this is Darwinism. Mm -hmm, and they're mm -hmm. like, people that go on social media are dysmorphic. It's like, well, that might just be Darwinism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. cannot physically do that with a phone, you might not make it. Fair. You're not useful. We're going to war in two months. That's such a funny bit that you have about who are we going to send? Because if you look on the streets of America, it's pretty good. all I'm thinking is who is going to go? They're I, on the streets, actually. Go. All these homeless people, I'm complaining about all the these homeless people that you want to get rid of, I say draft them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Draft them. Yeah. You know, they, they're all in like, I mean, they're, they're. They're in unbelievable there's, shape. And there's a lot of them in L.A., right? Tons. In Vancouver. Army's I, full. Oh. Battalions of them. I used to have a bit in Vancouver where I go like, hey, have the homeless realized there's more of them? Like, take the city. In San Francisco, they kind of did. They, yeah, once, yeah, they kind of did, huh? Once they had a newspaper. They just need a leader. Yeah. I'll be that leader. I mean, look. <laughs> All right, you with the crooked spine. Can you imagine? Up front. You would be incredible. You do have big Lord of the Flies energy. I do, right? Mm -hmm. If like in a movie where they're panning in of like all the cells in prison, uh -huh. there'll be like people like fighting and yelling and then they'll just pan to someone like you just like reading a book and mm -hmm. you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> An opera's playing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. And a big black man is bringing me my meals. You're the, you're the, and you're like, why is he? But it's all here. Everyone else is screaming and yelling and fighting. And you're hey, like, Jerome, give me a kiss right here. Give me a kiss. <laughs> hey, Jerome, give a kiss for daddy. You would it, love a cookie, wouldn't you? It's Jerome? clear that you're in charge of everyone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even though you're just like reading. Yeah. The guards say hello, Mister. Yes, they Maddie. do. They, they bow, Mister. Maddie. Yeah, we got the cherries you asked for. Yeah, we ran down to the farmers cherries. market. We got you those macadamia nuts. Cherries. I don't know. I just feel like yeah. you, I feel like you have some like eccentric. Mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm. So what's the plan? Like, did you plan for all this to happen? No. What do you mean? All of the, like the comedy? Because you've been doing stand-up for, what, 15 mm -hmm. years or something? Yeah. I mean, I always knew that, uh, like, um, I I got success pretty early in Estonia because the ceiling was really low and there was no, there was an explosion of stuff. I was just at the right time, mm -hmm. right place, right time kind of thing. Is you there, know? like, an Estonian equivalent to American comedians humping the stool? No, we never really. The stool hasn't been f yet. <laughs> But the stool be but the stool be sweating. I mean, let me tell you, the stool be sweating. I had this Russian dude jump my fence and cut down ten of my trees in my <laughs> in my old house. What is this a uh, Grand Theft Auto map here? <laughs> it does look like Grand Theft Auto out there. He literally was wearing true religion jeans. I don't know if you remember these. These are the ones that were like washed out and mm -hmm. had yellow stitching on the side mm -hmm. and like bedazzled pockets. Oh, I love bedazzled pockets. <laughs> Russian people love bedazzled. Such a, dude, it was such a power move. And then he was wearing a t-shirt that was like fake tie-dye, <gasps> like gray and white, and then had crystals like in a configuration that looked like a family crest slash 
dragon mm -hmm. and a mullet ponytail bald on top. Probably 60, 6 year old Russian cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Might as well. Yeah. I like, mean, if we're at bedazzled jeans, what's might the, as well what's throw the in the What's the Texas jeans. of Russia, by the way? The Texas of Russia. Like the most lawless. like Siberia. <laughs> oh, my God. That's wild. So cut, jumps my fence, cuts down 10 of my trees. Of course. I go to his house to like, I'm like, I, there are certain times I go, I'm gone. Like apoplectic, like hood bitch level uh -huh. unlocked when it's harming Why animals. Why did he cut the trees? Well, because they were obstructing his view. So I jumped the fence, which, by the way, I didn't have to do. I could have just gone around. I you was just like, oh, in but such, you were just, I was in such a dramatic place. So I jumped the fence. Seeing you jump over a fence <laughs> when I'm at home. <laughs> hilarious. One of the scariest things you can see in nature. Yeah, yeah. It was. And I'm like a rushing woman to, jumping over the fence. This is going to be bad. This is bad. <laughs> yeah. An angry woman is actually exactly. the hardest thing to contend with because we know you can't. A horny 16 year old guy. And an angry woman are the hmm. two most dangerous. Right. Because you, well, if because it, no matter how mad I am, if you hit me, you're going to jail. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's, so there's that's this, crazy. There's this invincibility complex. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when women get wild at shows and drunk, I'm like, yeah, exactly. It's, it gets so scary. So usually two men will fight over whatever she's doing. Yeah. Men will just start punching and each And guys other. don't even want to fight, but they're like, well, society. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> That's every fight I've seen, by the way, outside of a nightclub. Look at the guys' faces when they're fist fighting. Nobody wants to do this. <laughs> but bitches with tits are watching. So I guess society. So we got to just fucking, I guess you got to go to the hospital. I love the idea that when you guys like fight because girls are watching. They don't want to do you're it. You're just like. Because guys, Car why are you cartoons? Because guys are always there grabbing at first, pushing at first, and they're both thinking, let's just not go do it. But if the bitch be watching, I'm going to die. <laughs> For a girl, you don't even. I don't even know. Like I, don't even, I don't even like her. I literally don't even like her. And any girl that would be into you getting hurt, like, that's a. You don't want to be with her anyway. Yes. I'm not going to have Who's children. Who's this for? For society. Would I you... need to die for these norms to be filled. <laughs> but I'll die like... But then again, but then you know what happens if you don't fight? Hmm. You lose sleep for two weeks and then your dick doesn't get hard because you're like, what am I? Am I trans? Exactly. Do I even deserve to have this dick? Every time I see a guy who's trying to start something, like uh, I've been thinking about a guy for seven years now. <laughs> Seven years ago, seven years ago, Wait, I was a. I, this is hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm obsessed with how gay all men are. Seven years in ago, in that you obviously like women, but you've been thinking about a man for seven years. Seven years ago, I was at uh, as I was at a fast food restaurant with my friend. It was called Church's Chicken. It's yeah. in Vancouver. Church's Delicious. Chicken. Delicious. Delicious. We were late at night, uh -oh. and we're two struggling comedians. So I buy my meal. My friend buys his meal. You know. Yeah. And he gets the meal, but the meal has two burgers. So clearly what happened, he took someone else's tray, which was very similar to his order, but he got an extra burger. He knew what he was doing. We all knew what we were doing, <laughs> but that's the game. Baby. So we sit it's down Hollywood, at churches. Hollywood, baby. So we sit down at churches. So we sit down at churches and we sit down and enjoy the meal. And my friend gets a free burger. He needed that burger. And a guy comes over to our table. And he, he has Sean's tray. So he immediately knows. So you know what he did? He said, uh, like he confronted us. And then my friend Sean was like, oh. I was like, just being polite. Like, oh, sorry, dude. I just took the tray. But we all knew what was happening, you know. Church just has to, has to just make the other guy his order now. And we all go home happy. I mean, Mr. Church is not at this restaurant. Why is everybody, why is anybody angry at this point? So he comes over. And he's like, uh, my friend's like, oh, sorry, man, I took the wrong tray. And I'm there, too. And then he walks away and he gives us a look. Like, he gives us a look like, oh, yeah, sure, you made a mistake. That's what he says. Sure, you made a mistake. And we're standing and I have a French fry in my mouth. <laughs> it's not an alpha. <laughs> but, also, it, but also, if you have another man standing over you, and if I now stand up, now this is Till Death Street Fight World Star Hip Hop. Yes, and I'm going to get yes. stabbed in a country I don't have health care in. Great. <laughs> I'm on a tourist visa doing gigs that I'm not supposed to do. So I'm at a vulnerable position. <laughs> and I feel like such a bitch because I'm sitting there with my burger and my french fry and a little bit of sauce is here. I saw it from the reflection. <laughs> and, he, and he walks away like this and he, he goes like this. 
I've been thinking about him for seven years. <laughs> I think about him twice a day. Every time I work out, every time I go on a bike ride, or every time I see another man who's close to me and showing me aggressive vibes, I think about him. And I should have punched him. Ended up in a lawsuit, maybe uh, go to prison, <laughs> but my dick would work. <laughs> <laughs> so as a man, that's our choices. So Die <sighs> or get hard. There's certain things that eat Society. me. Things that eat me. Like, things that eat at me. Like, one time... I um, can't f*** you if I don't... If I, if I feel like a bitch. Right. You know? So you got to find and that you, guy. And you know what? Women be like, don't be stupid. But you won't come either. <laughs> now your p*** saw what happened. I know that your brain is like, it's a rational guy. Nobody needs to get hurt. But then the p*** lips. They saw what happened. Too. You cannot provide. You cannot. They saw what happened too. Because it's one, we have a baby. You can't provide. You can't and protect the baby me comes from. Out, well, the baby comes out like this. Because <laughs> now the baby has... I'm not standing up at church's chicken DNA in him, you know? So if you listen to this podcast, you know how much I love finding little ways to make life easier. I also make them emotionally harder sometimes, but that's just called a kink. Don't kink shame me. But when it comes to my wardrobe, you know that I've always had it. Okay, I've had it. I've never not had it when it comes to wardrobe, okay? I don't have time to try to find another version of the same exact flannel I always wear. Because I'm just saying it can be very annoying to find the right clothes that make you feel good. You'll buy new clothes, but they don't go with the old clothes and nothing fits. I'm just telling you, I'm just glad that someone just came in and handled all this for me. It's called Daily Look. This podcast is sponsored by Daily Look, the number one highest rated premium personal styling service for women. With Daily Look, you're going to get your own dedicated personal stylist to curate a box of clothes based on your body shape, preferences, and lifestyle. And we're not talking about an algorithm here, okay? These are real personal human being stylists who get to know you and you get the same stylist every time. So they're not just sending you random pieces, okay? They're curating wardrobe that truly works for you. Look how cute. I mean, this is like if I were a shirt. Like this plaid, it's like a plaid fleece. Oh my God, I can't get enough of it. And then this is, honestly, this is so weird. This is so weird because I was thinking, I'm always cold, but I'm also always hot. And I'm always sweating, but I do like wearing turtlenecks. And this is a sleeveless turtleneck. It's kind of like they're reading my mind, quite frankly. This is super cute. This is like a gray, like a like a steel blue gray, just solid top. Oh, God. They nailed it in black jeans. They read my mind. What I love most is that you can try on up to 12 premium pieces per box in the comfort of your own home, saving you time and effort. Whether you need something effortless chic for a day at the office or just a cozy outfit for everyday routine, Daily Look has got you covered. I just filled out their quiz. That's it. I am super excited. I mean, literally, I got everything that I would buy if I went to a store. This is actually kind of wild. The process was super easy. It was super fun. It's a little self-care moment filling it out. So here's how it works. You're going to fill out their style quiz, including your price and lifestyle preferences. And then Daily Look is going to send you up to 12. Look at this. Hand-selected pieces. Look at this motorcycle jacket. This is so good. Babe. My guy also has a motorcycle jacket that looks kind of like this. I feel like... I don't, they really know what they're doing over here, okay? You get to try everything on. Keep what you love. Send the rest back. Daily Look is going to offer free shipping both ways, so it's no commitment. It's just fun handling, solving your problems. I'm putting this on, okay? I cannot stop talking about Daily Look because it makes me feel like I have my life together even when I'm running around like a crazy person with a baby around my neck. Hold on. I swear, a big guy in a little coat. Look how cute. I'm cute. This is like an olive green leather jacket. Oh, you guys get me. I'm in like my like, like badass mom era. Let's go. It's got all of your favorite brands, AG, Good American, Girlfriend Collective, Spiritual Gangster, you name it. They got it. And they have sizes for almost everybody from extra small to 3XL to zero to 24, you name it. It's time to get your own personal stylist with Daily Look. Look how good I look. Head to dailylook.com to take your style quiz and use code Whitney for 50% off your order. Once again, that's dailylook.com for 50% off and make sure they use my promo code Whitney so they know that I sent you. As we transition into fall, 
and our schedules get busier with back to school activities, tighter work deadlines and the start of a holiday preparation saga. It's easy to forget about taking care of ourselves. One simple but effective thing that you can do during this busy season is start taking Nutrafol. I am telling you, the holidays are coming up. You're going to be stressed. You're going to start balding. Let's get ahead of it, okay? Nutrafol makes it so that your hair grows back visibly thicker, so much volume, noticeably less shedding because Nutrafol is going to be your new best friend. It's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand trusted by over one million people. In just three to six months, you can see thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding, which I really need because like a maniac, I cut my bangs. So I am doing the Nutrafol thing to grow those out, okay? Thinning hair is, it's different for men and women. So Nutrafol offers multiple formulas tailored to different life stages, such as postpartum or menopause and lifestyle factors like plant-based diet. This way, you're going to get exactly what you need for your unique hair. I've been taking Nutrafol. I started taking it like a year and a half ago, even before I got pregnant, because everybody told me that I was going to start balding, and they were right. In clinical studies, 72% of men saw more scalp coverage after taking Nutrafol men hair growth supplement for six months, and 86% of women saw improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women hair growth supplement for the same period. Building a hair growth routine with Nutrafol is simple. Just purchase online. You do not need a prescription, but you will get a subscription so that if you want some automated deliveries and free shipping to keep you on track, that's what they do. They will also help you with a Headspace membership that will also be included. Get results that you can run your fingers through for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol. Dot com. Enter the promo code good for you. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and stylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. That's Nutrafol.com, N U T R A F O L.com. Promo code good for you. Okay, we're on an IG Live. Hey, hey, hey Snapchat. Hey, no, we're not on Snapchat. Can you please stop? Hey, Snap. No, snap, how old are you? Pop. Nope. Snap, how, crack, and pop. Old. Nope. How old are you? Well, what? Well, <laughs> How old? Now that Benjamin Button. The most difficult place you performed, Ari? Uh, f***ing. Well, like Belgium, Amsterdam, one of those. I can't they think believe they're you just. I can't believe you just said that. Same thing. Yeah. In Belgium, it's, it's known. But they don't comedians. laugh; they clap, like like yeah. weird golf claps. And also, they're like uh, they think they're better than you. They're like fancy people, uh, mm. you know. Norway was a little confusing because um, uh, it, Norway and Sweden were a little bit tricky because when I went to Norway... What an interesting thought. That's how <laughs> Swedish people watch a comedy. What an interesting thought. Well, I I'm was... happy you are closer on the show. <laughs> Very good. Very good structure. I appreciate the rule of three. Oh, what a loser. That's how they look at Nerds. Standard. Yeah. Well, when I was it in... It is an interesting way. When I was in Sweden, a bold woman on stage. I was doing all these jokes, that, like you know, when like a guy hangs up on you and like you call him back, and you, and then he hangs up on you, and it was just bombing, always kills. And I was like doing all yeah. the jokes that kill here, and I was like, why is this bombing? Like I literally just always say that. And this woman in the front row just went, "Oh, men here um, respect women." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, shit, none of these jokes are gonna work." By the way, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that lady was behoobled. <laughs> In on the scam. Ooh, what's your pre-show ritual? He, we've done a show together. I don't recall a ritual. I I like a walk. I like some fresh air in my lungs. I like uh, centering myself. I don't like loud music and dudes talking about rap. Hey, hey, there's hey, a lot of, hey, hey. There's a lot of guys who get like loud beats and a dumb whore in my ear. <laughs> and can I just think about my opener for one second, Mr. Brian Simpson. <laughs> yeah. Can I think about what I'm going to say to 2,000 people for one second, please? <laughs> All right. One more question, you guys. Do an impression of a Virginian. Is this a thing? All right. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't know which area it is. Am I correct? Am I correct? Am I close? I mean, hell? kind of. Let's shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What the hell are you doing on my lawn? What the hell? Kind of model. Hell? Do Virginians have palsy in your opinion? I, I like don't know. <laughs> I, like I have to do American. <laughs> Hello. That's my American. Do I've it again. Practicing. Hello. <laughs> what? I like to pay my credit. That's you like my American. You like the what? I like to pay my credit. Okay. How about cash back? How would you? <laughs> hey guys, can I get cash back? That's American. <laughs> I'm from Virginia. Oh. 
I'll show you. I have an intolerance. Um, someone asked if your watch is a Rolex. No, I think it's a Kia. It's a Tissot PRX. But you see, the normal PRX will have an analog watch with the sticks. I don't like watches with the sticks because I'm not Socrates. And, and I want to know what the f***ing time is. <laughs> so that you can... I hate those sticks. So you, you know can be late? Stick? You don't like the the the, ha the hands? The, yeah, yeah. They will, uh, whoa. What time is it? And some what time? Men, what time? Exactly is what time? Look at my watch right now. You a know digital it, watch. You know exactly what time. I is. love a digital watch. I love a digital That's watch. That's what I want. Because I need the numbers in my face at all times. At all times. At Why all do times. I have to do? How long have I been on stage? Seven minutes and thirty-two seconds with a digital watch with an analog. Oh, I'm um, done three sticks and a half. <laughs> yeah, long stick was behind short one. I'm fucked. <laughs> Missing a stick. <laughs> Those. And some, you know, some cool watches don't even have the, the sticks on the sticks. It's just the two hands spinning in infinity. <laughs> Which way? Where am I going? <laughs> am I time traveling? Exactly. <laughs> I travel, I'm a, and also I don't have a driver's license. I'm a professional pedestrian. I need to be at the bus stop at 8.55. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> to read this. Text. Yeah, I hope the bus driver doesn't have the sticks too. Now we're all just riffing about... What time of day are we anywhere? <laughs> and it's a, it's a, it's it's not an expensive watch. It's like five hundred bucks. But I got the employee discount because the titties of the girl working at the store, they were touched. By you? So you hooked up with the girl that works at the store? I didn't store? hook up. No, a little. Uh, we made out at a nightclub. Touched her pussy through the jeans a little bit. <laughs> felt the heat. That's all I had. That's all I need. Felt the heat, then went home. Thought about the guy from Church's Chicken and had to go I, home. I think about him every day. <laughs> literally, dick in hand. Dick I got think soft, about had to leave. I literally think about him more than I think about anybody in my life. Mr. Church's Chicken, I will get back to you. <laughs> I will kill you. And I will eat you. And I will f*** you. I will marry you. Treat you real nice. Kiss you on the lips. You are like um, in the movie Taken. Like I have a very specific set, set of, of skills. skills. And it's sucking men off. <laughs> and I will suck this guy off. <laughs> and break your heart. I've been thinking about this guy. Uh, uh, guys, whenever you're in a position where you're like, I might get shot unless I de-escalate the situation, always escalate. Get shot and get your dick. <laughs> At least your dick gets hard. Get shot, get stabbed. Go the distance. Protect your woman. Be the alpha. Get punched. Get kicked. Get ran over. So you can be a real man and die. That's what a real man is about. Hi, Robbie Hoffman is here? No way. Oh, my God. I love you. Hi, Robbie. I'm good. I am in a boot. It's pretty sick. It's embarrassing. I'm fine. I'm doing well. You know Robbie Hoffman. The funniest. R Robbie Hoffman? Yes. Comedian. Brilliant. Yeah, very, Hilarious. Very, very familiar name. Is it the she? Robbie Hoffman. Is it the she or he? I don't know. I'm very interested. Either or. Robbie. It's, it's a she, right? We... It, it, how does Robbie identify exactly? Oh, it's sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Wow, I'm very sorry about on this. On a live, I, on I'm a live, you're fuck. gonna put me on the spot. I didn't know, I didn't know. About I didn't know, someone's... I didn't know Robbie. <laughs> I didn't know Robbie. Well, it's been a pleasure doing comedy. Uh, <laughs> I've just got canceled uh, because you know what? I didn't know. I think Robbie goes by she, they, them, comedian or comedian. She's gay. But on which, and I'll say it. But on which side? Okay. Robbie, Robbie's in the chat. <laughs> Robbie just said, I'm here sorry, with I'm from the uh, Soviet Union. We don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gabby We're not there yet. We're still hitting our wives Ga legally. <laughs> We're still. <laughs> so we, which we'll, is, we'll get to, we'll get to you guys. We <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to you. <laughs> once we figure out the, let's stop hitting our, once we find the teeth of all our wives <laughs> under the cupboard, we'll get back to you on the gender issues. You hit your wives. Yeah, we're trying you... to get the Russian spies out of the government at the moment. Get back in line and we'll worry about the prefix of the we, gender. We hit our wives because we see them as equals. Exactly. <laughs> who can handle it. I've, you know, I've had kicked women. Like about seven women I've hit kicked as hard as I can. Because he used to go to kickboxing and he would spar women. And I'm a feminist. So I'll hit you like I hit any other guy. Mm -hmm. How'd that oh, go? Felt amazing. <laughs> felt like I got back some anger that's been 
deep rooted <laughs> one for the incels <laughs> is it, well I'm not the hero you want but I'm the hero you need <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god weirdly those girls also like me after after I kick them in the head yeah just something something you know women they have that it's the only way I can come <laughs> So women with concussions are in you? Oh, yeah, they love me. <laughs> if you're, like, slobbering all over, oh, you're going to love me. <laughs> if you don't know, if you think mirrors are another room, you're going to love me. <laughs> he came in and I told him I don't like mirrors in my house. Yeah. Is it that? That's what you mean? No, like, mirrors are another room. Like, you're so stupid that you're, like, mentally disabled. So you look at a mirror and you're like, is that another room? That's the girl that oh. loves me. That was the bit. Oh. That, that, that like, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks. I thought so, it was me. Sorry, one for the boys with me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. One for the boys. People are just still throwing out a movie. John Wick. Good one. Oh, men love John Wick. By the way, John Wick. My favorite part about John Wick is that when people are getting punched, whoever the sound designer is on John Wick, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. we're giving way too much credit to everyone else. Like on screen in the movie, the sound designer is the funniest person alive <laughs> because when someone gets hit, it'll be like crack. Like it'll everybody's every bone breaks at every hit. Like it's so funny. And then I'm I'm, of course, see something different than what everybody else sees autism till I die and like you'll be watching with someone I'm like that person's dead like <laughs> yeah. all the like it literally it'll be like bleh, bleh, bleh. like the way that the sound designer adds in like cracks and shatters and you're like that's not the sound it would make if you were punched like in the face also I love that John Wick uh he went on a rampage and murdered men who are probably dads to children mm -hmm. for a dog <laughs> hey John yeah get a new dog you don't have to take down a syndicate that was actually beneficial for the city because we had structure. <laughs> so now you killed all of them and now we have Donald Trump. Thanks, yeah. John. Your Russian is showing. Thanks, John. No. You killed. Get a new puppy. <laughs> hey, John. You also killed men who probably have puppies and now there's a <laughs> sad puppy at a cemetery missing Dimitri. So how about just get a new dog and a new car, you sick <laughs> Imagine how Koreans watch John Wick. They're like, for a dog? <laughs> <laughs> for a... For, is it, is it, is They're like, wait, like... where is the corpse of the dog? It, where is... Where was it? Where are we cooking it? <laughs> where is it we... <laughs> It's like, uh, remember when Marley and Me came out? Remember Marley and Me, the yeah, dog? Yeah. Imagine how Koreans watch that movie. <laughs> like, these Americans are insane. You're literally like us seeing somebody with a chicken. Like, oh. <laughs> the whole movie is a, just a dog. <laughs> just these Koreans are like, what the f***? How long is this meal taking? <laughs> They're gonna marinate this. Yeah, Jesus Christ, this is a long marinade. Oh, you make the dog feel good and part of family, so it creates the good type of meat. I see. I've heard of this. I've heard of this. It's like Kobe beef. I've heard of this. Make the make the uh, dog part of the family. Oh my god. And I then we you. fillet it. I hate your guts. <laughs> hey John, get a new dog. And every American movie with the guy who who, who takes down a syndicate is always him. Like, I don't, uh, my favorite is Denzel Washington movies. Uh -huh. Denzel is always just trying to work at the docks and go to a diner. But then some <laughs> hooker keeps getting in trouble and he has to murder 40 men. <laughs> Remember that movie? What was it? Lockdown or what? Was it? Interception? Interstellar? Inter Internalize. All of his movies are a, like a word, yeah, a word that's it's him a just noun, and then it's made a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brave at the, at the diner, or, yeah. always him just being like this, and then some hooker gets involved, and now we he call them prostitute. I think a hooker. Hooker. <laughs> and you even even the mob boss at Equalizer when he's dying, even he's like, "Hey, Denzel, <laughs> it's just a hooker <laughs> dog." Like. <laughs> We have 800 of them. 
she doesn't love you. Yeah. <laughs> She's hey, not. Hey, Denzel. She gonna be back on the streets. <laughs> Any minute. Exactly. Why do I need to die? <laughs> what was another one? Was How that? badly did this movie test in the screenings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, also, a uh, very funny scene. Uh, remember Liam Neeson's Taken franchise? Mm -hmm. Where he's f looking for his daughter. Mm -hmm. My favorite scene is when he's looking for his daughter in the brothel house. And he keeps knocking the doors down. Bah! And then there's like a passed out little girl there. And he turns the little girl, not his daughter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's down like 20 doors. And there's like a lot that is just like, no, my little angel. Like, I don't give a f about this Romanian slut without a passport. F this girl. <laughs> Where's my baby angel? Where's my ignorant girl going to Paris? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what he did. This one scene that's so funny. Literally turns the head. Oh, no. the f <laughs> you don't have to break her neck just because yeah. he's not your daughter. <laughs> I have a very specific set of stills. I will find you and I will kill you. If you're not my daughter, I will also kill you if you get in my way. <laughs> and also I love that he he took down the whole syndicate of brothels and prostitution oh, just because his baby girl got missing. Hey, Liam, just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Liam. <laughs> Take down the brothel anyway. Wait, you could have taken them down this whole, the whole time? This whole time. But we needed your dumb girl to go missing. We needed your daughter to be in it for you to care? Exactly. Wait, so this whole time... So this whole time, Denzel You had this very specific set of skills? And you didn't use them? Until your whore daughter... Your whore badly behaved doesn't, doesn't listen to it. You can see that. Your daughter goes missing. Also, at the end of the movie, you move on to the next one, right? Yeah. Or you're just done once you found her? There were all those other girls in there? What are the other girls? What about them? Hey, take those girls, yeah, Take too. them all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so there's, there's still thousands of girls? Thousands of girls out there that Liam is not saving. Oh, God. Because her daughter, because his daughter is safe at home. I hate your guts. Oh, God. Uh, I love American movies. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. You have to kill everybody. Everybody. Just Denzel wants to work at the docks, but then he's like, oh, I guess I got to kill everybody. <laughs> guess I got to take down a whole mob. <laughs> That's the thing with the mob, that... though. You can't just take out a couple people. You got to take them all out? That's the... And every day Denzel doesn't do it. Hey, Denzel, kill everybody. <laughs> when you talk... I always feel like you're about to say, <clears throat> we're not so different, me and you. Oh, we're not so different, me and you. I mean, built in a lab to say that. We're not so different, me and you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're the villain. I thought you were my friend. I'd be a great villain. Oh, and you come in at the end and you're just like have a cat on your lap. And then I suck you off out of nowhere. <laughs> what do you think of that as a villain? Out of nowhere. Good to see you, Mr. But Neeson. like you don't let him come. Oh, Just you want right, to get them right to the edge and you then want pull to away. See your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Um, all right. I love you guys. Um, website, Instagram, say it all. Instagram, Ari Maddie Comedy. Or if you Google Estonian comedian, I'm the only one that comes up. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's very easy to find me. <laughs> I'm the only one. I'm obsessed with you. Uh, he was on my Austin show. Murder. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, You're it was a great room too. Murderer. Great room too. Fun. Murder. Durr. <laughs> All right, I'm officially. You're officially being trafficked. I have to let him go. I'm holding him captive in my house, and I do have a lot of great. Just leave Neeson. I had a lot me. of oil around. It's not baby oil, but I do. Surround myself with oil at all times. Um, okay, so ariamaddy.com. Love you. Uh, I you. end these very awkwardly. You know this. Don't ride elephants. Goodbye. Bye.